Let me just pick my nose on camera with these science gloves. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Joey with How To Make Everything. This video is sponsored by Mel Science. You can click the link below to get 25% off your first month subscription. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you get a chance to get a subscription for free. An upcoming project I've been working on for several years now is attempting to completely grow my own printed t-shirt from scratch. Growing all of my own cotton, spinning, and then weaving it, then also producing all of the pigments to print on it. But before I move forward with printing on my nearly completed shirt, I'll learn how the professionals do their t-shirt printing, so I paid a visit to the local design house, Franklin U. Yeah, so I'm Dan, uh, and this is Dave, and this is also Dan. We are Franklin Design House, and we are a full service self screen printing and design studio. So basically what that means is that when clients come to us, we can provide them with graphic design content, branding, logo design, to make sure that they can get their business up and running. This is some of our self screen printing equipment that we have in the back, and that's what we do. Cool. Yeah. What are the basic steps of screen printing a shirt? That's kind of a loaded question as there's a lot of steps. First, you're gonna have your sketch. You're gonna print that, burn that into an emulsion-ready screen. You're gonna then be able to print that image onto a t-shirt. So what are some of the challenges you face? You're troubleshooting 100% of the time. It could be anything from the registration of your image to the garment to the consistency of your ink. There's just a lot of different factors. So you really have to be detail-oriented and be ready to troubleshoot them when they arise. You guys wanna show me how it's done? No, I don't. No. <laughs> you mean you want to stay like right now? <laughs> All right, we're done. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> you want to show me how it's done? Sure thing. All right. We first begin with an idea and sketch it out on paper. We then recreate that image on our computer and print it out on a transparency. I always am thinking of how's this going to look on a T-shirt. A lot of my art has kind of gone to that direction of I can see the different stages of this print. You go too detailed, you run the risk of losing that detail in either the printing stage or the actual burning of the screen stage. It's just a matter of being a little more intelligent in how you execute a design to make it print ready. Boulder is better, yeah. is what I have typically found. So for the second part of the process, you would go into a dark room with photo safe light here we have the emulsion that we will pour into the trough and then coat the screen so that you can burn your image into the screen. And there it is. How much does that cost? I want to say like 50 bucks a bucket. That's really expensive. This is what your coated screen would look like. If you don't let it dry long enough and you like put your image on the screen and burn it, sometimes it'll blow out. So then you gotta do it again. So it's good to have multiple coated screens just in case something were to happen. You have to be really careful with like the emulsion when you're coating screens. It could be that you're pushing too hard with one hand and not hard enough with the other hand and you have an uneven amount of emulsion on the screen. It could be old emulsion too. It could be that you stirred it too fast. If you don't, for example, like take the due diligence to pop the bubbles <laughs> on the screen, you're gonna end up with like pinholes all over it, kind of like batter. Pancake or waffles? Waffles, all the way. We've got our screen um, with the emulsion on there, and we've got our transparency with our image that we want on the screen. Two of the common mistakes that a lot of beginners will make is that they put the image the wrong way on the screen itself, and they'll put it on the wrong side of the screen. This is the well side. You don't want to put it on that side. You want to put it on the opposite side, like so. Right now, it looks like it's backwards. When you bring it up, it's the right way. This is our exposure unit. The light bulbs that you see that are active on it right now are light safe bulbs, meaning that they're not gonna affect the emulsion that we have on the screen right now, which is really important. It's the same thing with the rest of the lights in this room. We just have to put it into the exposure unit like so with the transparency in between the glass plate of the exposure unit and the actual screen that you're exposing itself. This specific unit, it's got a vacuum top. Not all exposure units are like this. One, it vacuums the screen to the glass. You make sure that you have a complete seal between your screen itself and the image itself. So you get like a 100% perfect burn. This is the vacuum part, it gets a little loud. It's all vacuum tight. We're ready to expose. Andy, would you like to do the honors? Do I ever? Bam, and then you can kind of see those UV lights. That's basically what's going to be exposing the screen. You ever get a tan? I haven't tried it, but I'm sure you could get a pretty good one.
after we have washed this screen out, we're left with this impression. It's basically a stencil. You can see any of this pink stuff like this, the ink's not gonna go through. Any of this lighter stuff where you can kind of see my hand come through the background, that's where the ink will be able to force through the screen and that will leave the actual impression onto your garment. This is a really important part of silkscreen printing where we're looking at image that has been burned on the screen and exposed and washed out. And at this point, we're looking for any inconsistencies in the actual screen itself, um, such as like pinholes, blowout, and you'll end up with these tiny little, basically like stars. You get blowouts like this, it's not a problem. Tape it off, you're fine. Um, or there's emulsion filler that comes with pins as well too. This is <laughs> uh, an ancient press that has been in our possession since 2009, but this goes back to, I think, the 80s. It might even be older than I am. We call this Bertha. It's been in storage for the last like, five years, and in the last two days, I have been cleaning the shit out of this thing, and a lot of WD-40 and even more elbow grease, mostly because it's a relic and it's super nostalgic. And I'm actually really comfortable printing on this because this is what I kind of cut my teeth on. Boom, come up. Go to your next color, boom, you're good to go, just like that. This video is sponsored by Mel Science. So because this episode is about screen printing, today we're gonna find out what other inks go into black ink. You think it's just black, but it's not. So it's a very simple experiment. We're just gonna take our black marker, draw a small circle of black ink, place it into the dish, our solvent, All right, so that turned out pretty interesting. Never would have thought that black ink had red and blue and some other colors in there. So that definitely worked. Uh, you can find this and a bunch of other experiments at melscience.com. Thank you for sponsoring this episode and let's get back to it. So this is where we're gonna actually do the printing itself. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is line up your transparency on the platen, the surface that you're gonna be printing your garment on. Once everything's all lined up, you can begin your printing. Material is everything when it comes to garments. Like if you are constantly printing on like crappy garments, you're gonna be able to tell, you know, you're wearing it on your skin. We try our best to f source quality garments that are also like affordable. Stuff that we enjoy printing on, which is like American made union shop kind of stuff can range anywhere between like $5 a shirt to like $9 a shirt. That's just for like a t-shirt. Uh, as more people are understanding like sustainability and and recycling and trying to save the planet and that kind of thing, whereas customers are gonna understand that yeah. higher price points now. And you can easily tell when a, a shirt is printed on that, yeah. that rough. 100%. Once you get good stuff, you're like, this is my standard now, and this is what I'm this is what I'm sticking to. All right, so that's the printing process. Uh, what you saw me do was flood the screen with ink and then apply more pressure on the second pass, which then pushed the ink through the screen onto the fabric and garment. And then I used the paddle to hit the ink to about 350 degrees, which then cured it to the garment. And that's one shirt out of a thousand. <laughs> Alright, it's your turn. The unfortunate thing about silkscreen printing is that it does get super expensive really qu quick, so you have to make sure that you quote yourself and the clients that you're working with a price so that it makes it sustainable for you to produce work. Otherwise, you end up just finding yourself digging your own grave. A lot of it, you just kind of got to roll the punches.
Cool, so this is the screen that we prep for how to make everything. Everything turned out right, so we didn't have to recoat and reburn. We're using a 230 mesh count screen on this. It's kind of like your linen for your bed. The higher the number, the higher the thread count. It means that you can get a really high amount of detail. You get one shot at, at printing on a garment. Yeah. And once that garment is off the platen, it's done. It's off the platen. You can't There's no it. way yeah. you're getting that thing lined back up yeah. on that screen. It's not possible. No way. Sometimes some things come up on the fly. For example, like if your company is out of the emulsion you buy and you've got a deadline you have to adhere to, what do you do? Do you source a new emulsion? Do you wait? What happens if your deadline and it's you got three days to do it or whatever, whatever. There might be some troubleshooting you do like on the spot. So find your happy medium, find your balance, find your, your groove, stick to that. Don't change it unless someone else shows you something better. Thanks to Franklin Yu for showing me the process to printing t-shirts. And let me try hands on. Reverse engineering this to apply it to my own t-shirt will take a bit of creativity, but this will definitely help give some perspectives. Be sure to check out Franklin Yu and their work on their website. Franklin Yu also designed this really sweet HDME illustrated t-shirt that will be selling soon as a limited run. Thanks again to Mel Science for sponsoring this episode. Here's your chance to win a free six month subscription to the Mel Chemistry Kits. Here are the three winners from our previous quiz. To enter to win, just answer this question in the comments. What three colors, when combined, are used to create the images on your screen right now? In a couple of weeks, we'll do a random drawing to select three lucky winners. If you are too eager to wait to see if you won, click on the link below to get 25% off your first month subscription to Mel Chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.